Now let's see how we could maybe simplify this problem. It looks pretty complex initially. This is a jib crane that we've got in a typically a factory kind of situation, manufacturing plant. A big old weight out here. We've got a beam. We've got a pin support here and a little tension rod up there to help this thing. Um, this carrier here, this hoist, can move back and forth, and oftentimes this whole thing can uh, can rotate around a column um, to be able to do a whole bunch of different uh, movements in the system. All right, so let's look at this beam ACB, and you know they've done something interesting and unique here. They've actually popped that connection point up above the beam. It's unique because in most of our statics problems, you know, they don't even give you that dimension. Here they did, so that means you should pay attention to what's going on um, because they did, went ahead and did that. All right, so because that somehow should factor into what we're doing. So we've got some weight located here, W, some arbitrary distance A away we've, uh, from the support from the pin. We've got a B, or a, you know, a BX and a BY. Don't know yet what direction those would be, and then we've got the cable right there. Now note something here: these two at B have got to resolve into one, and so that's a makes it a three-force member. And there you go. This is what's going to tell us exactly what the directions of these things are, and how that's all going to work. And so. BX and BY have to resolve themselves so that they intersect as a point just directly above the load, which can move around, but um, no matter what we do, that somehow that has to be the, uh, the intersection point. And notice if the load gets way out here, the intersection point might end up being way down even near the beam here. So there's some funky things that would happen as this gets way out there uh, past point C.